The FIA ETRC, the European Track Racing Championship, is event number four of the season here at the Nürburgring in the beautiful Eiffel Mountains. The traditional German racetrack is hosting its 34th Truck Grand Prix. It's the highlight of the year for many fans and drivers. Every season there are more than 100,000 visitors coming to enjoy the action here at the Eiffel. You simply have to be here. It's like a big family and we've all been coming to this event for more than 28 years. It's an incredible feeling. You can't find anything like this anywhere else. The feeling of being close to the action, that's what matters. Welcome to Nürburgring! Willkommen in der grünen Hölle! A lot of action at the Nürburgring, but someone who is very relaxed is the dominant driver this season, Jochen Hahn. The five times European champion travelled to the Eiffel Mountains with a big lead. The Germans Iveco with start number one has a gap of 41 points heading into the next four races. Second in the title race, Steffi Halm. She's already claimed more than 100 points, followed by Norbert Kirsch, Adam Lachko, Antonio Albafetti, René Reinert and Sasha Lenz. The European Championship leader and last year's champion knows he's under pressure and is focusing on the fight for a sixth title. We want to rock this thing. We're in Germany, German driver, truck Grand Prix, every point counts for the championship no matter if you are second or third or fourth, a point count and you need to focus on that. Steffi Halm, the only regular woman in the field, is overall in second place. She's been on the podium six times already. Consistency, diligence and meticulousness. That's obviously her key to success. I just hope we don't have any dropouts and of course a win would be amazing, but it's not a must-have. It's more important to score points. That's what I focus on. The same for Norbert Kirsch. The third-placed Hungarian sees a lot of potential to improve. He is the one who wants to close the gap to leader Jochen Hahn at his home race. Of course, that's not going to be easy for the pilot of Team Tankpool, Ferenc Fancy. I'm part of a German team, Tankpool, Ferenc Fancy racing team, and uh, I'm really happy about it. So I'm really happy to be here on the Nürburgring, on the home race of my team. A lot of Tankpool fans are here, so I'm really happy about it. And uh, yeah, we are third in the championship, which I think is really, really good. And um, we aim to go to the podium again here on the, in, on the, in the Nürburgring. And then uh, hopefully we can keep that position in the overall as well. The qualifying and the Super Pole session for the first race at the Truck Grand Prix is always taking place on Friday afternoon because the complexities of the timetable just doesn't leave any option. The Grand Prix circuit of the Nürburgring is the shortest racetrack on the calendar. It's only 3.6 kilometres long and it promises lap times of under two minutes. And the quickest in Super Pole is Jochen Hahn, his sixth pole position of the season. The man living in Altensteig has always been fast at the Nürburgring and now scores a time of 1 minute 54.782, 23 thousandths quicker than Antonio Albafetti last year. Spaniard is only second this year, even though he was a lot quicker in the third sector, including the chicane. The chicane and I have never been friends, and now she got me a game. I saw on my theoretical best lap where I was and thought this could be good, but then I lost three tenths in the chicane and was thinking, oh, how stupid can you always be to lose time in the chicane? At some point I have to find peace with that chicane, but I can't tell you yet when that will happen. The start grid for the first race. Jochen Hahn on pole position for his home race in Germany on the inside. As said before, that's the sixth pole position for him. And up until now, poles have always resulted in a race win. Next to him, second on the grid, Antonio Albafetti, the Spanish matador in the truck sport Lutz Bernau teams and AN. I will try to, to keep uh, this second position. Maybe I can try to, to fight for the first position. 
But uh, let's see, I mean, I just want to, to have a clear race, you know, without troubles. On the second row, Sasha Lentz, the local hero who was born close to the Nürburgring. He starts third, and alongside him starting fourth is Norbert Kisch. About three and a half tenths slower than the pole setter, Jochen Hahn. Fifth on the grid, Steffi Hahn, second in the championship, and she's got high expectations. She wants to impress her local fans. Everything set for the first race on Saturday morning. Lots of spectators are in the grandstands ready to follow the race. It's blast off. 25 trucks on the grid and it's always a great moment. So much horsepower on its way down to turn one. On board with Antonio Albafete. Lentz and Kish are behind the Spaniard. They're running third and fourth. On board from Adam Lachko and there's contact ahead. Kurzim crashes into Steffi Halm. Big drama for the pair of them. No driving mistake can be seen. It's bad luck for Steffi Halm who was hoping for a good race here. But what happened to Kurzim? Jochen Hahn leads the pack through the Mercedes arena while the right front tyre of Kurzim's truck doesn't have any more air. We got a tyre puncture during the starting phase in the second turn. I lost the front wheel, couldn't brake, couldn't steer, and that's why I crashed into Steffi. Of course, it's incredibly disappointing, especially because it's not my fault and the race is over. But it can happen. Oh well, I can't change it now. In the lead, it's Hahn ahead of Alba Fete and Norbert Kisch, who pushed in front of Lentz. Then get Korber, Mr. Truck Racing, with Adam Latchko for the check in sixth. Ollie James in number 22 is the overall leader of the Grammar Truck Cup. But at the Nürburgring, he's not performing at his best and he's overtaken by Terry Given in his MAN number 37, heading on to the start-finish straight. He ends up in 12th, having to give best to his British rival. And shortly after, he loses out too to the Spaniard, Luis Refuenco, in his green and white number 64 rig. Refuenco is the biggest opponent to James when it comes to the points in the Grammar Truck Cup Championship. In the Mercedes arena, James fights back. It's a brave move by the Brit. He clatters his way by and gets a five second penalty from the stewards. He ends 15th. Crossing the line to win, Jochen Hahn seven tenths ahead of Alba Fetti, and then Norbert Kish three and a half seconds back in third. While Steffi Halm can't score any points in this race, limping back to the Schwaben truck team in the paddock. A well-deserved win and a well-deserved kiss from wife Diana for Jochen Hahn. It looks like quite a big gap on the straights, but in the chicane, looking in the camera, it was quite close, I have to be honest. But it was good to get back to concentration, not make any mistakes. Tough racing. From the outside, it looked easy, but not in the truck. It was a tough fight, that's for sure. A seventh victory this season for Jochen Hahn, who's therefore further ahead in the championship fight. And here, the race result. Hahn from Alba Fete and Kish for the podium. Lentz fourth from Kurba, Machko, Jose Rodriguez seventh, and Anthony Janiak in eighth. Janiak, the Frenchman for the Lion truck team, therefore takes pole position for race two. Ollie James, only 15th, the Grammar Cup leader, not scoring important points. And this time, there's page three of the results. 21st, Jennifer Janiak, the younger sister of Anthony. French woman is still missing in the brand new race game of the ETRC which has been launched at the Nürburgring and of course it was immediately tested by the ETRC drivers. A lot of fun for everyone who was there. Uh, yeah sometimes I drive with some simulators but uh, I get a little bit uh, off the page you know. So, no, but it's good, it's quite good. I think that the people will enjoy it, so it's quite uh, real. It was especially important for the developers to give the drivers in their simulator seats the feeling of sitting in a real race truck, like Sebastian Vaxin of software company Big Ben Interactive explained. 
we wanted to have uh, to feel the weight of the truck. Um, we wanted also to have some specific things like you know uh, for braking that that kind of to stop that kind of truck. Um, you have to use a lot of your brakes, and they get they get very very hot, and you need to put some water on on your brakes to cool them down. If not, you cannot finish the race. With the ETRC simulator game, players can choose from the official trucks of the 2018 season. Almost all of the ETRC tracks were designed incredibly similar to the real deals. Most of the race drivers, of course, chose their own characters in the game. Back to reality, the start grid for the second race, a special kind. Because at the Truck Grand Prix at the Nürburgring, the grid walk, as well as beer, grilled sausages and trikes are all part of the atmosphere. And for this race, the drivers join the parade on the trikes for races two on the Saturday and the Sunday. For Adam Lachko and his wife Katharina, it's a romantic moment just for the two of them on this big Nürburgring stage, shortly ahead of the second ETRC race of the weekend. The Czech driver will start third on this semi-reverse grid. Can he score a first win of the season? Ahead of him on row one, Portuguese driver Jose Rodriguez starting second. And the French driver Anthony Janiek in his yellow lion truck with number six on the side. He's on pole. Neither are to be underestimated. I hope I have better truck and I must try use this performance and I go to the front. The grandstand is packed ahead of the second race. Two trucks on the front row next to each other, side by side to turn one, followed by Adam Lachko, who is looking for the gap in the white Bagheera run Freightliner. But there's no way through at turn one as the leaders still run side by side. On the left is Rodriguez, on the right is Janiek. Power oversteer from the Portuguese causes contact, and Janiek is forced out wide going into turn two. Lachko seizes the advantage and he overtakes both of them to get the lead. Norbert Kish right on the tail of Jochen Hahn. He's also looking to make up ground. And that's how they run through the Mercedes arena and then towards the hairpin. Kish tries the outside line against Sasha Lentz with too much speed. He goes straight on, runs out wide and falls back down the order. Hahn gets past him as well. Kish drops to fifth. Kish's teammate, Fabio Citignola, the young German driver, has to retire his truck due to a spring issue early on in the race. Lap three, Janiak fourth, followed by Norbert Kish. Kish seizes his opportunity. He dives up the inside, but there's contact between the two. Janiak is turned around by Kish. There was a misunderstanding as to whose line it was. And I actually thought that he has some kind of technical problem or some kind of problem and he wants to let us go. And that's why I, I go in, you know, and I stay on the inside. But he, he, he comes back from the outside and we crash, so it was a little bit of a misunderstanding. I was under pressure, but Norby was very, very optimistic. optimistic. We didn't understand each other, he thought I'd leave the door open, and that's how the collision happened. He spun me to 180 degrees, and about 20 race trucks were driving by left and right. Unfortunately, another crash led to a completely damaged front and suspension. I was met with 20 camions that passed to the left and right, and forcément, it happened what it had to happen, the petit accrochage that made that it arrache all the front of the camion. Shane Brereton, the Brit celebrating his ETRC debut this season, only racing at the Nürburgring, didn't see the French driver in time. There was a big impact between the two, and that's the end of the weekend for Brereton. And Adam Lachko, who hasn't won an ETRC race in almost a year, he has a comfortable lead behind him. Rodriguez, Lentz and Hahn are still fighting for places two, three and four. At the beginning of the 11th lap, Sasha Lentz overtakes the Portuguese driver Rodriguez and right behind Lentz, Jochen Hahn seizes his chance as well. Can he finally overtake Rodriguez down at the first corner? The man in the blue and yellow truck is being chased too by Antonio Albafete. Rodriguez looks like he's on target for fourth place now. The 
the Team Schwabentrack racetracks are on a mission at the end of the Grand Prix course. Steffi Halm ahead of Get Korber. At the chequered flag, Adam Lachko ends his bad luck run at the Nürburgring, claiming the race win ahead of Lenz and Harm. And both of them post-race show off their donutting skills in front of the fans. The race is definitely special because there are about 150,000 tickets sold and about 100,000 or 120,000 taking a seat on the grandstand cheering for us. That's incredible. The entire Bagheera team extremely happy to have finally taken a win because the next race after the summer break is on home turf. That's in the Czech Republic. And this win at the Nürburgring is something special for Lachko. Confirmation of the results. Lachko, Lentz and Hahn for the podium ahead of Rodriguez. Steffi Halm fifth. Up from the back of the grid, don't forget. And get Korber sixth from Alba Fetti and then René Reinert. Ollie James takes 16th place. The Granite Truck Cup ace ahead of senior Rodriguez. Janitha Janiak in 20th with Frenchy Wojciech, 21st, a lap down. It's every time when you win in Nürburgring, it's very nice and uh, here, it's good. The race, the best entertainment for the fans, but of course, every year, the concert highlight at the Mullenbach Schleifer of the Truck Grand Prix is another hot spot. Tom Astor, German country legend, plays and sings the biggest hits in front of thousands of fans. Followed by mega fireworks, sending everyone to a good night's sleep, dreaming of Sunday, because it's another action-packed programme, including qualifying, Super Bowl, and two more ETRC races. Jochen Hahn is again on pole position. Norbert Kisch second. The Hungarian hasn't had a lot of luck lately when starting on the outside of row one. Can he turn around his fortunes going into race three of the weekend? Obviously, the, the start is uh, not the best for us. So, you know, I just try to make the best I can and uh, hope, hoping for a push, push from behind. <laughs> Third, Antonio Albafetti, and fourth on the grid, Sasha Lentz. The same four drivers who ended up in the same four positions the day before. The interest of the fans, incredible to witness, and the field of now 24 trucks is led away by the Mercedes-Benz pace truck. The Actros, the third generation of the Actros truck, the lead vehicle in the formation lap. Behind it, all the racetracks have to stay in line until the lights go to green. It's blast off. The field accelerates down towards the first corner. Jochen Hahn just ahead. The grandstands tremble as this huge field of horsepower pulls into the first corner. Looking back from Norbert Kish's truck, right behind him, Sasha Lentz, and breaking hard towards the first corner, Lentz gets into the back of Kish, sending him wide. Kish loses places and others are caught up in the mess. Kish drops to almost the back of the field, right behind Anthony Janiek, who he had the accident with during the second race. This time, both of them are OK, while Theo Calve and Jamie Anderson in the white truck collide during the Mercedes arena. They rejoin a flat tyre for Anderson. I wish he would have pushed me at the start, you know, not, yeah. at, the, not at the braking, okay. you know. But he pushed me in the braking, so I couldn't make the first turn, which I think is a shame. It was not nice. Um, I fall back to like 15 or something. The top 10, led by Jochen Hahn. Midway around the opening lap, while starting from 11th, the fight for the best Grammar Truck Cup position is on. Jane, Sittignola, Gibbon, and right behind them is the recovering Norbert Kish. James overtakes Irving Klein Nagelbord, the only Dutch driver in the championship. Up front, it's Hahn, Halm, and Alba Fetti. Could the German track lady have some better luck this time? Norbert Kirsch is fighting his way through the field, battling with Irving Klein Nagelbord at the chicane. Klein Nagelbord takes the emergency exit. Also in strife is Terry Gibbon. He retires on lap three due to technical problems. The result, double waved yellows at the hairpin. On lap five, the top ten starting now to open up gaps between them. Between Kurzin and Kish, though, there's a big battle building up for eighth place, especially important due to the reverse grid for the following race. Eighth would be pole.
on lap eight. It's time for Norbert Kish to overtake Andre Kurzim. The Mercedes goes through in the Mercedes arena on the better line. Kurzim plays fair, gives him racing room. Maybe they were thinking about the previous day when Janiek was the victim. Another battle during this race is Lachko versus Lentz. The German tries almost without a break, but simply cannot find a way past the Czech in the Freightliner. Antonio Abafetti does gain a place. He overtakes Steffi Hahn, who is under investigation from the officials due to overspeeding. Ultimately, she gets a drive-through penalty. Jochen Hahn takes win number eight of the season, crossing the line ahead of Antonio Abafetti. Steffi Hahn serves the drive-through. Too late, she falls down the order. I don't know why this happened, but the result is not only bad for the race, but for the championship, it's an absolute catastrophe. Jochen Hahn celebrates another likes to flag victory for the reigning European champion and another 20 points. Alba Fetti takes second and Adam Lachko third, the Czech profiting from the bad luck of Steffi Hahn. Andre Kurzim seventh, another one to profit. So therefore he is going to take pole position going into the second race. Andre Kurzim, eighth, another one profiting, so he will start on pole for the next race. Oli James, 11th, with his best result of the weekend. This is weit, in weiter, weiter vorne. This Jochen Hahn says it's still far in the distance, a sixth title he's dreaming of. That's something a lot of us forget. I had a small technical issue in the last four laps, which you couldn't see from the outside. Oh, I thought I might have to retire, even though it was so close. Points, points, further to the front, increasing the gap, winning. When it's finally time, we'll celebrate for sure. Between celebrating the winners of the third round and the start of the fourth race, there's some time to take a walk through the paddock and listen to the songs The Wild Wild West at the truck stop. It's an incredible atmosphere. Back on track. Norbert Kish again on second position, the position which didn't bring him any luck this season. On the second row, Reinert and Korber, Mr. Track Race, excited that the hot time on the track is almost over, while Sasha Lentz and Jochen Hahn would gladly take another podium. Just like Adam Lachko, who's in a great mood after his victory the day before. On pole, it's Andre Kurzin, and he's the fastest away from the start, with Norbert Kish holding up the pack behind him. Reinert, Lentz, Korber and Lachko. This time, Kish has a good start through the first corner, while Alba Fetti goes from seventh up to third. On board with Andre Kurzin, who is finally leading an ETRC race. Lachko and Hahn, eighth and ninth, and watch out. Steffi Halm again in trouble. This time it's problems with the steering. It's been a dreadful weekend for her. She was second in the championship coming to the Nürburgring. Lap six, Kish chasing Kurzim, forcing a mistake coming through the chicane. The 2014 and 2015 champion seizes his opportunity and goes through ahead of his former teammate to grab the race lead. The don't touch racing Iveco falls back into second place. Kurzim tries to fight back on the pit straight, but without success. The following positions are packed. There's Corbett ahead of Reiner, Hahn, Lachko and Lance. Reiner under attack from Hahn and he's got damage. But Norbert Kish won't lose his victory, winning the fourth race at the Nürburgring with a gap of six and a half seconds to Kurzim and Alba Fetti. The trophy for the winner is presented by the FIA's race director, Tony Iden. Hungary, Germany and Spain all represented on the podium. The top ten, all regulars in the championship. Kish ahead of Kurzim and Alba Fetti, get Korba fourth ahead of Reiner, Hahn, Lachko seventh, then Lentz, Jose Rodriguez coming home in ninth place. Fabio Citignola takes a first win in the Gramma Truck Cup. 
He's also part of the Tankful Fear at Svansig team, leading to a double win for the team from Nottingham. It was a hard weekend, a hard first half of the season, but with this victory, I think um, it's, a, it's a good way to go to the summer holidays. Jochen Hahn extends his lead in the overall championship and now has a gap of 67 points to Antonio Alvafletti. He's followed by Lachko, Kiss and Steffi Halm down in fifth ahead of Lenz. We're looking forward to the second half of the season, hopefully with as much fun and the drama, while the drivers are as close to the fans here as ever, with the autograph session always popular. The FIA ETRC delivers great action and a great atmosphere. I think here it's like a mecca for truck fans. When you get to see this event live once, you will always come back. Let's put it this way, Green Monday and Truck Grand Prix, these are the biggest holidays of the year.